Good afternoon. Thank you all for listening again today. As I mentioned yesterday, these daily briefings will now be online in order to abide by the social distancing order issued statewide last week. We know that COVID-19 testing and PPE are still some of the biggest concerns right now. And I want to assure you that we're doing all we can to address this issue. We continue to use both public and private resources to increase our testing capability and to set up more mobile units across the state. Our SEMA and DPS teams are also working 24 hours a day, seven days a week to get millions of the PPE for hospitals, law enforcement, and first responders. We're working out the logistics to get this important equipment to the people who need as quickly as possible. We will be receiving more shipments this week and in the weeks ahead. Public Safety Director Sandy Karsten is here again today to provide more details on PPE. Commissioner Margie Van Dieven is also here today to provide updates from the Missouri Department of Secondary and Elementary Education. And Commissioner Zora Mulligan is here to give updates from the Missouri Department of Higher Education and Workforce Development. We know school closures have been another big topic of concern, and we want to make sure parents, teachers, administrators, and everyone else impacted by Missouri's education system are as updated as possible on the ongoing COVID-19 situation. As most Missourians are aware, all 555 of Missouri's public school districts and charter schools are currently closed, impacting nearly 915,000 students. And I want to thank our local teachers for their leadership they have shown during this challenging time for our state. School leaders in our state make decisions every day about the health and safety of their students. And it is important that they have the flexibility to do what they feel is best for their communities. Every school district is different, and it has been great to see so many schools working, find alternative education opportunities for our students. It is important. Remember that learning can take place in a variety of ways. Even though school buildings are closed, learning will still continue. In addition to learning, Another big concern with school closures has been meals for students. So many students rely on school meals each day, and it has been heartwarming to see every public school in Missouri find a way to continue feeding their students during COVID-19 closures. We are proud of DESE for working quickly to secure the necessary USDA waivers to make this possible. Those waivers give schools the ability to prepare and serve meals even though they are closed. Our higher education institutions have also been severely impacted by the COVID-19 crisis. More than 350,000 students are enrolled in two and four-year universities across Missouri. Many campuses have closed down but are working to meet the COVID-19 challenge by delivering courses and resources in new ways, such as moving to online classes. We also appreciate the colleges and universities are not only supporting their students and staff, but also their communities. Many universities are exploring how they can use their expertise, technology, and other resources to help during this time of crisis. COVID-19 is affecting everyone but DESE and higher education have been working hard to remove barriers and provide more flexibility for schools so they can stay focused on the health and safety of their students and communities. Before I turn this over to Commissioner Van Dieven and Commissioner Mulligan for more updates, we will have Director Sandy Carson give an update on the public safety and the PPE. Director Carson. Thank you, Governor, and good afternoon, everyone. 
In every disaster, there is a commodity that's in high demand. Sandbags in response to flooding, generators in response to an ice storm, roof tarps after a windstorm. With the corona pandemic, the precious commodity for everyone we work with is PPE, personal protective equipment. It is the number one issue we are hearing about, from hospitals to long-term health care facilities, from EMS, from the fire service, and from law enforcement. So let me give you an update on where we are today. In response to the COVID-19 emergency, Governor Parson has redirected $18 million from the budgets of several departments across state government to meet the critical need of PPE. The three main departments are the Department of Social Services, the Department of Health and Senior Services, and the Department of Public Safety, especially the State Emergency Management Agency. Working day and night, our SEMA team has been working very hard to acquire PPE from commercial markets, from major suppliers to vendors on Amazon. As of one hour ago, our SEMA fiscal and operations staff have placed orders for a total of $17.3 million worth of PPE. They are purchasing the PPE materials that have been identified by the medical, healthcare, EMS, fire, and law enforcement communities. The single most requested item is N95 respirators. In response, we have purchased more than 4.2 million N95 respirators at a cost of $10 million. But we're also working to acquire everything from gloves and surgical masks and gowns to disinfecting wipes, hand sanitizers and goggles to biohazard bags. At last count, our SEMA staff has placed orders for 61,000 safety goggles, 95,000 three-layer surgical masks, over 7,400 surgical gowns, and over 335,000 bottles of hand sanitizer and many more PPE items. Again, we have placed orders to purchase more than 17.3 million worth of PPE out of the 18 million in the special authorization from Governor Parson. We expect to take delivery at our state warehouse over the next few weeks, and we have our logistics team and a distribution plan ready to go to turn the PPE around to the people who need it in the state as quickly as possible. We know that we will need additional PPE, and we're working to acquire more through other sources, including directly from FEMA through a direct federal assistance request through the Federal Emergency Management Agency. At the same time, we're encouraging our response partners to purchase PPE directly themselves when they have an opportunity to acquire it through their commercial vendors and to keep all their purchase documentation. Although the COVID-19 pandemic is still developing here in Missouri and across our nation, it is already clear it will have a more sweeping impact on the entire state of Missouri than any other previous disaster that has impacted our citizens. Just as there is an urgent need for federal and state assistance to help Missouri families meet the challenges we're facing, there's even a greater need for all of us to come together and help and support one another any way we can, whether that's checking on your neighbors or assisting with extra supplies that you may have. We ask that you help your partners, help our neighbors. We may be using social distancing to combat this situation, but we will succeed if we work together to overcome the challenges of COVID-19. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Next, I will have uh, Commissioner Van Dieven come up and speak for Desi on Desi's part. Margie. Thank you, to, thank you Governor Parson, uh, for your focus on the needs of our students during this time. Schools across our state are inspiring us all as they step up to help serve their students in any way they can during these unprecedented times. On behalf of the State Board of Education and the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, we say thank you. 
We're working hard to remove barriers and provide the flexibility necessary for local school leaders so they can keep their focus on what matters most, the health and safety of their students and staff members and the communities they serve. In consultation and cooperation with the governor's office, a few steps we have taken to assist them in these efforts include, and as Governor Parson has just touched on, the Missouri Department of Elementary and Secondary Education proactively applied for two waivers from the USDA. These waivers support schools and communities in providing meals to children in areas experiencing school closure in response to COVID-19. And they were approved on Sunday, March 15th. As a result, all Missouri public schools are able to provide food services to the many students who rely on them each day. As school funding is based on student attendance, we communicated quickly with our school leaders about the issues as they navigate important decision-making uh, decisions. Simply put, we are working in accordance with Missouri state statute to ensure that our school leaders are able to make school attendance decisions based on the safety and well-being of their students and staff. In addition to our school leaders, our teachers and school staff had de have demonstrated what commitment and doing what is best for students looks like. Recognizing that students can and should continue to learn throughout building closure, our educators have worked quickly to create ways to provide alternate educational opportunities for their students. One of the biggest ways for taking things off of their plates is by canceling statewide required academic assessments for the remainder of the school year. And we thank Governor Parson for his support on that effort and appreciate the quick response from the U.S. Department of Education on this issue. As I shared last week, there is a time and a place for statewide required assessments, and now is not that time. We applied for and received a waiver from the U.S. Department of Education on Friday, March the 20th. We worked with Governor Parson last week to waive the requirements for any remaining student teaching and internship activities that are not able to take place in schools because of closure. Great teachers matter, and these future educators have worked hard over the last four years preparing for this important career. DESE will ensure that these new educators get the certificates they have earned. There are numerous consequences associated with extended school closures, including the need for children uh, critical, uh, for critical health care professionals and first responders. We are working with several other state agencies to identify child care gaps that may exist in Missouri communities and we'll use this information to develop collaborative plans to help provide uh, the need of child care for these in public, important public servants. And speaking of gaps, in closing, I will recognize that there is no doubt that this situation challenges the department's main mission of ensuring that all Missouri children have equitable access to opportunity. This morning, we asked school leaders to provide feedback regarding challenges that exist in reaching all students in their communities, specifically in regards to technology and high-speed internet access. We will use this information to better inform decisions and guidance at the state level amid extended school closures. We discussed this important issue today with the offices of our two U.S. Senators, and during that call, they too asked that we extend their sincere gratitude and appreciation to our educators across our state. In this ever-changing and ever-evolving situation, there's new information to share all the time, virtually every hour. All department updates can be found on our DESE COVID-19 website. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Margie. Next up, I will have the uh, Commissioner Mulligan for Higher Education and Workforce Development, which are going to be two key areas, one now and one for the future. So, Thanks, Zora. Sir. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with everyone virtually today as we're converting all of our meetings to these experiences. I welcome any questions you have for me now or any questions that you'd like to submit to our department. We're happy to work with you to answer your questions. Missouri's colleges and universities have played a huge role in coronavirus preparation and response. 
Their first order of business was making sure their students, faculty, and staff were safe and that students were getting the education they paid for. Although most students have left our college and university campuses, they'll be moving to online instruction to complete their coursework this semester. And I want to thank the faculty, administrators, and staff throughout the state for the countless hours you put in and will put in to making this massive switch. It's also important to note that although not all, it's, excuse me, it's also important to note that not all students have been able to go home, either because of logistical issues or because they don't have homes to return to. Our schools are continuing to take care of those students, just as they're pivoting to care for their communities as well. All around the state, there are phenomenal examples of the ways higher ed institutions are meeting local and regional needs, and I'm happy to highlight just a few of those today. Our colleges and universities have emptied out their supply closets to donate personal protective equipment to local emergency response agencies. Glove, masks, gowns, swabs, but also ventilators, healthcare providers, and experts. They're using 3D printers to manufacture personal protective equipment. They're ramping up food pantries to help members of their communities who might not have enough to eat. And they're donating food to daycares stood up to serve kids whose parents are on the front lines of our response to COVID-19. And they're also doing testing. The University of Missouri is providing a free online assessment tool that you can use to decide if you should seek testing. Mizzou is also administering hundreds of tests every day and that number is increasing. So again, to everyone who's led through this transition from cleaning crews to residence hall advisors to food service staff to faculty to IT support teams to your partners at the Department of Higher Education and Workforce Development, I say thank you. Your work is making a difference for your students, your communities, and your state. And to the students who've been affected by these changes, all I can say is hang in there. I know this hasn't been easy and I know that there are a few places more beautiful than a college campus in the springtime. It hasn't been easy, but it's important. Education changes lives, and that will undoubtedly be true for all you learn between now and the end of the semester. At the department, we're also working on making changes to make sure that students are able to continue to use the services and receive the benefits that we provide to support their education. Last week, we made some announcements regarding temporary changes to the a program, which is a very important scholarship program in the state of Missouri. We've got about 13,000 students throughout the state who used the a award to pay for tuition and general fees, mostly at community colleges, last year. Because of high school closures and because of college closures, we've had to issue temporary guidance about the program to make sure that students are still eligible uh, for the fall. So the temporary change includes uh, eligibility requirements for grade point averages, full-time enrollment status, and mentoring and tutoring hours. We've tried to make changes to reflect the reality of the situation in which current, uh, excuse, excuse me, in which students find themselves now living. These changes only apply to 2020 high school seniors and college students who are renewing a for the 2021 academic year. We'll be continuing to provide additional guidance. One of the big questions we've gotten from counselors is about the a uh, requirement for Algebra 1 testing and, and, of course, exam requirement. So please stay tuned for that information. Uh, like Desi, we've got a web page up that provides a lot of information about COVID-19, and that's dhewd.mo.gov backslash COVID-19. Thank you very much, and I look forward to entertaining any questions. Commissioner, thank you very much. Again, I just want to say that all the directors from all the departments are working hard every day trying to find solutions to a crisis. And I couldn't be more proud of the work they're doing. And I also want to say for the people around the state, there has been so many people in the private sector who's reached out to the governor's office and offered their assistance, all the way from buying some of the materials that we so desperately need, all the way from the test kits, all the way to the PPE, the personal protective equipment for our first line people. We've had people reach out to places like China, like Mexico, all over the world. Businesses, state are trying to help. Businesses are offering to retool. Here in Missouri, where we don't have to be so dependent on other states bringing us product. And I think those are the kind of things that show the backbone of who we are in Missouri. People stepping up every day, trying to do the right thing to help one another. So with that, we'll answer a few questions. Kelly? Okay, uh, the first question is from Kurt Erickson from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Uh, Governor, he'd like to know, uh, your budget proposal is based on a 1.9% growth of tax revenue. Has that changed at all? And if so, uh, what areas are you looking to cut or possibly find the money in, in those areas? There's no doubt the original budget we proposed is going to change drastically. There will be major changes as we move forward. And none of the numbers that we figured back before the first year is realistically as we do here or we are here today. And the fact is, between now and June, the fiscal year of the state of Missouri, changes will have to be made. 
many, many changes will have, be have to made. It doesn't take much to realize the economy's in the shape it's in today, and you know it's going to continue to slide till we get on top of the, the, the virus that's out there and we do everything that we can. It's why it's so important, again, to make sure you remember the order that we told you to do. Less than 10 people, six feet apart, stay at home if you don't need to be out. Those have to be done. The quicker we get those things done, the quicker we can get back to the economy where it needs to be. Go All right, Governor, this is from Steve Grant, KY3. He would like to know, will Missouri set up COVID-19 treatment wards, so to speak, as in maybe parking garages, maybe athletic stadiums, or unused hospital wings? Yeah. On the question of where we go to alternative locations for COVID-19 patients or other patients for whatever, every day we have a contingency plan where we're looking at buildings across the state of Missouri and every community all across the state, how we might be able to do that. We've been in connection with the, uh, the guard with FEMA every day. We've been in touch with the Corps of Engineers that can come in and build actually facilities or refurbish others. But we're talking about that every day to have those sites available. And yes, we're planning that every day and we'll continue to do that. All right, Governor, this one is also for you from Brian Hosworth, uh, Missouri Net. Governor Parson, you said Friday that legislators need to return to Jefferson City and approve the supplemental budget, even if they vote on a football field or a parking lot. Has there been any changes of that talk or any talk of doing that? You know, we, we, we're in constant contact with the legislature. The legislators know how important the supplemental is to the state of Missouri. We have to get that done. So we have to find a way to do that. And that's going to be up to them to be part of that solution. But uh, I do believe the legislatures, whether Democrat or Republicans here in Missouri, will answer that call and be up here at the state capitol or be wherever that might be to make the votes, to be able to change that supplemental budget because they understand what kind of a priority it is, but that has to be done. And we've got to find a way to do it, and I believe they will. And uh, we'll be here working with them every day when that day comes. All right, we have another one. Uh, Jason Hancock from the Kansas City Star. I know Governor Parson has mentioned being in regular contact with the White House during this crisis. So I wanted to see if he agrees that in a week or two that many of these actions taken to combat the disease of spread, will, the bans will be lifted. Do you feel they will? The President today said that they would be lifted by Easter. Do you agree with that? Well, I hope the President's right. Let me just say that. But the reality of it is we're planning this much longer than two weeks here in the state of Missouri. And I think that's how you do to make a good plan, how you're going to deal with the crisis. I think when we're all doing executive orders and the mayors are doing their orders for two weeks, the reality of it, we all know that we believe this is going to continue for some time and some for some weeks. But I think we'll do I'm optimistic, too. When I see the things that are going on at the federal level, when I, listen, when I talk to conversations with the White House, there's a lot of optimists out there, too. There's a lot of good things happening. If these meds come through and we can come up with some, a, a, a pill, a vaccine, whatever that might be, once those things can come about and help beat this virus, it's just crucial. And I think every day there's a lot of people around the United States working hard to make that a reality. And I really feel like they will. Okay. The next one is from Nikki Ogle, KY3. Governor Parson, the ACLU of Missouri is calling for you to grant the release of nonviolent, vulnerable inmates who are serving prison sentence in state correctional centers during the coronavirus, coronavirus pandemic. Is the, are you planning to, uh, to consider any of this? Why or why not? Well, we are not at this time. Let me tell you that. People are incarcerated for a reason, and that's because of what the law is. Right now, there's a lot goes into that to simply saying you're going to release somebody, much like in the school case when we released, told the schools to be able to close when they wanted to close. But if you allow people to go out, one, have they got a place to go? Do they have a home? Do they have a location? And again, what are they going to do? You know, what do you have to offer them? Right now, probably in our prison systems, right now is where they should be. We're prepared for that if the coronavirus goes in there. We know we had an active case of that, and we're prepared for that. So right now, the answer to that is no, we're not planning on releasing anybody early at this time. All right, this is uh, Governor from Rudy Keller, Columbia Daily Tribune. Uh, do you believe that you are saving lives by allowing activity to continue, or are you costing lives? I don't believe I'm costing lives at all. I believe we as Missourians understand what this crisis is. I think every Missourian understands that, and everybody has an opinion uh, of what they think should happen. 
But the reality of the day, it comes back to what we've talked about all along. It's going to take personal responsibility at the end of the day. It's going to take people abiding by the laws, abiding by the orders to be able to pass this virus, to be able to get to where we can move on from this. I think that's important. You know, it's, you know, there's going to be plenty of time for people to blame people for certain things down the road. Everybody will have a different opinion what should have did, and we'll all be able to second guess back then. But right now we should all focus on trying to make sure we're doing our part as individuals, not relying on government to tell you everything to do. Well, the, we've got to step up as individuals in this state of Missouri. We've got to step up as parents. We've got to step up as grandparents. And young adults, you've got to step up to be able to do your part. We know what it takes to slow this virus down, but it's not government. It's all of us taking individual responsibility. All right, we have a couple of questions for Dr. Williams. Okay. Doc? Dr. Williams, today the St. Louis mayor tweeted, we need more tests. Do you feel an adequate number of tests are available in our state? Thank you for the question. And as the governor said, I think that uh, our strategy depends on uh, everybody stepping up and doing their part. And we're incredibly appreciative here in Missouri that we're seeing that among our academic and our private partners. Our strategy on testing is twofold. We're doing about 2,000 tests a day in Missouri through our academic and private partners, and you see that manifest in the 28 mobile sites throughout the uh, state. So we think that only increases. Our anticipation is, is that will increase even more significantly. So we're incredibly appreciative to our partners at WashU and the University of Missouri and our private labs that our strategy of doing more testing uh, among clinicians in the mobile sites is working. And, and that's reflected in the uh, markedly increased number of cases that you see coming back positive. And that will increase as we have community transmission. So yes, we think that that strategy is working. But yesterday, according to CDC guidance, uh, we listened very closely to our clinician partners. I met with the Missouri State Medical Association on Saturday. The governor and I met with infectious disease experts from all across the state on Sunday. I met with the uh, Missouri um, pediatricians last night. And one thing we've heard from them is with our state testing, they very much would like more discretion to know, uh, to help them guide their uh, treatment uh, to have quicker turnaround, which we can do in the state lab. So yesterday, if you'll go to our website, we changed our criteria according to CDC guidance and what we were hearing from clinicians so that they have more of the ability to decide who gets tested. It also very much focuses on our uh, 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 people in long-term care facilities and also those people who have been exposed to somebody with COVID-19 or somebody suspected of having COVID-19. And, and again, that's all from listening to the clinicians who are out there every day putting themselves uh, at the front lines of this, and we can't thank them enough and want to help them in any way we can. Okay, this next question is for uh, Commissioner Van Dieven. This will be the last question. This is from Elisa Nelson, Missouri Net. I talked to Superintendent Sam Duncan today with uh, the New Madrid School District for the Missouri schools who are delivering meals and education materials to their students. Are we getting those people in education on the front lines, the protective, the PPE gear they need to ensure they are not spreading COVID-19? Yes, thank you for the question. I, I uh, wonder if you're, if you're noticing school buses in your communities and if you are, uh, even though schools are closed, we're using our school buses and they're transporting food and often learning packages to your communities and to our students. And I've been hearing recently that often the people who are on board those buses include the superintendent of schools and other key professionals who are just doing the work. Um, again, I understand the question from Sam. It is uh, the superintendent's first priority to be thinking about the safety of their children and their staff and their communities, um, so we appreciate the question. We also understand, as you heard at the beginning of this uh, press conference, of the real need for PPP, PPE, and uh, understand the need to prioritize in these, uh, while, we're, while we're still seeking to gain access to some of those materials, that we absolutely need to prioritize um, for our health professionals who are in direct contact for extended periods um, with their patients. So we'll continue to work on this issue. Thank you for the question. I appreciate it, you bringing it to our attention. Thank you. Let me just make a few comments. Uh, 
One on the testing situation. Look, there is no doubt all of us in the states, every governor I think would tell you the same thing I'm going to tell you. We wish we had more tests on hand. There's no doubt about that. But unfortunately, the supply all over across the United States is, is not to where it needs to be at this point. You have majority states out there, a lot of states out there, I won't say the majority, but two or three states out there are becoming a priority. And we all know what those are by listening to the news and everything. So every day we're doing everything we can to get tests in, that PPE equipment you're talking about. The reality of it is we don't, are not plentiful in any of that right now. So we have to distribute that on need ourselves here in the state of Missouri. And we're going to continue to do that, and people need to understand that. You know, all of us take a risk. You know, when we talk about do people do this, do they do not, do they deliver meals, do they not? You know, the bottom line, somebody has to. Somebody is going to have to take the everyday responsibility to do things for Missouri. There's going to have to be people working out there in processing plants today to provide food for the people that are our home, that can stay home. There's going to be have to people deliver product down the road, whether that's to the gas stations, whether that's the pharmacies. Sometimes there's just some people going to have to take a variety of things to Missouri, and they're going to have to do that. No different than me as a governor of the state of Missouri. Every day there is a certain amount of risk when I come to the governor's office. But you know, I'm willing to take that for the people of this state. And I think there's a lot of other people out there willing to step forward to do the right thing right now. Our emergency personnel out there every day, law enforcement goes on. Wrecks are going to happen. Crime is going to happen. Law enforcement have to be at all. Same way with other emergency room calls. There's a lot of things beside COVID-19 going. And I know that dominates everything we're doing. But we still have to have people out there every day providing services for the other people that maybe are fortunate enough to be able to stay home. But the reality of it is not everybody can do that. So it's, again, it's about all of us working together here in Missouri. And I want to thank everyone for listening today. We're proud of our schools across the state for stepping up to help serve their students in any way they can during these unprecedented times. This is what it's going to take to overcome this challenge. Everyone working together for a common cause. I will say this over and over again. It is crucial to follow the order and social distancing as much as possible. Unless absolutely necessary to get out, stay at home. Whether you personally think so or not, this is serious. And you're putting not only your own health at jeopardy, but the health of everyone around you in jeopardy. COVID-19 isn't going to go away in just a few days or weeks. But if everyone will look out for one another, follow the order, the social distancing, and work together for the greater good of Missouri, we will overcome COVID-19 and come back stronger than ever. Thank you very much.